Hello and welcome to the third episode of the Insider's Guide to Project Cars 2 where today we're going to be taking a look at the pit stops in the game and how to perform them properly. Firstly we're going to start off by taking a look at the options that are geared towards pit stops within the game, then we're going to take a look at performing pit stops under AI control and then doing them under manual control and finally we're going to take a look at the rules and regulations for pit stops within the game. So kicking off with the options then, the first one can be found in the gameplay settings and it's called manual pit stop. This will allow you to toggle between having AI control or having manual control during the pit stop process. But once an event has started, you can't toggle the option. It's only available to be changed here in the main menu. So make sure you have this set to the option that you prefer before going into an event. Next up, we have the pit stop cinematic cameras option. This basically allows you to choose whether you want to be able to view the pit crew doing the work on the car or whether you prefer the more realistic approach of being locked to the camera that you drove into the pits with. The third option is the pit stop visual cue, which is an option that can be found in the gameplay settings but over on the on-screen guides and display tab. What this does is provide an indicator to actually show where in the pit lane your pit box is situated. It's very very useful for those times where the pit lane becomes really really busy and there's multiple pit crews out in the pit lane trying to perform work on various cars and obviously trying to spot your own pit box can be quite difficult but turning this off will give you a more realistic approach and your lollipop man does wave you down when you're approaching the pit box. It's just a nice little indicator that makes it that much easier to spot your own pit box. The next two options are found under controls and edit assignments and under the vehicle tab you'll be able to see the two options which is request pit stop and also pit speed limiter. The request pit stop button obviously allows you to assign a button to request a pit stop but this option is also found on the ICM menu which we covered last week and then finally you've got the pit speed limiter button here which allows you to turn on and off the pit speed limiter when coming in and out of the pits and allows you to have full control of it. If you don't have a button assigned to the pit speed limiter it will do it automatically when going into the pits whether that's under AI control or whether that is under manual control. So with that in mind it does mean that if you're a little bit tight with buttons available on your wheel or controller you don't necessarily need to assign a control assignment for this as the pit speed limiter will engage and disengage by itself when entering and exiting the pit lane. Just something to note about this as well is the pit speed limiter option will be there for every single car in the game no matter whether the real car had that functionality or not in real life. It's there to make it a lot easier for you guys to control your speed down the pit lane and ensure that you don't get any penalties. This next option is more geared towards PC users which is the pit crew detail option over on the performance tab. Here you have three options, you can choose between none, player only and all. And what this does is that for both yourself and also all the opponents that you have in the race and in the pit lane will have just a lollipop man. They won't have any fuel engineers or wheel technicians, it will just be the lollipop man there present in the pit lane. The player only option will mean that you will have a full entire pit crew including a lollipop man and all your opponents will have just a single lollipop man no other pit crew will occupy in their pit boxes and then the all option will mean that everybody or all your opponents including yourself will have the full entire pit crew including the lollipop man, tyre engineers, fuel engineer and everything they will all be present. Basically it's an option that allows you to personalise the amount of pit crew detail within the pit lane to basically improve performance in and around pit stops. Obviously the more people present in the pit stop the busier it's going to be the more it's going to affect your frame rate whereas if you choose a much lower option or shall I say the none option you have a lot less pit crew and your frame rate should be a lot better. For console users I don't believe you can adjust this but I believe it defaults to player only so you shouldn't have to worry about it you'll just be able to identify your pit crew by the full pit crew being there present in the pit box. The next option can be found when setting up a custom event or a online custom event under the rules and regulations option you do have this pit exit penalty setting here. What this allows you to do is enable or disable the penalty for crossing the white line when exiting the pit lane. This is the one that extends out onto the track and is designed to separate the traffic coming out of the pit lane from the traffic coming down at full racing speeds. So the last couple of things with regards to options and this is geared towards online lobbies is when setting up an online lobby there's two options that can be found in the realism settings before you actually launch the lobby that you're going to be hosting. 
The first option is forcing manual pit stops. Obviously, with this on, every player in your lobby will have to perform a manual pit stop. There won't be any AI control. And with this option off, everybody, all the players in the lobby, will be under AI control when in the pit lane. The second option is the pit stop errors. Turning this option on will allow a random chance for the pit crew to actually make errors during the pit stop process. This obviously can delay the pit stop for longer and having this option on basically allows for that random chance to happen. It doesn't happen in every pit stop but it can happen in some. Having this option set to off will obviously prevent that from happening and everybody's pit stop is down to what it is they're actually performing in the pit stop whether it's changing tyres, repairing all the damage on the car or refuelling the car. So with all the options now done and out the way, we're going to actually take a look at the pit stop process. And firstly, we're going to be doing this under AI control. Now, obviously, you want to make sure that everything's prepared, ready for your pit stop to make it as smooth and as quick as possible, because you want to be back out there on the track in as little time as you possibly can. Now, obviously, with that, you need to make sure that your pit strategy is all set up, which we covered last week. And obviously, using the ICM menu allow you to select the pit strategy that you would like to apply for this next coming pit stop. So providing you're all set and good there, all you need to simply do is obviously request for an actual pit stop, which you can do via the ICM, or if you've got a button assigned to requesting a pit stop, you'll be able to press that, and you should see the little HUD notification come up on the right-hand side, the little pit board there, and that will indicate to your pit crew that you want to come in on this lap. Now, there's quite a big advantage to actually requesting a pit stop before you come into the pit lane as the pit crew will actually acknowledge the pit request and actually go out into the pit lane and ready up in your pit box and be there prepared ready for when you actually come into the pit lanes to make your stop. If you don't request for a pit stop, the pit crew will react to you coming into the pit lane, which means that if the pit lane has a very short pit entry and you're one of the first pit boxes in the pit lane, your pit crew may not actually be there ready for you and ready set up for when you actually come in and stop in your pit box. Obviously, that's going to cost you time. So the more preparation that you can give your pit crew to actually get them out in the pit box and set up ready for your pit stop, the quicker your pit stop is actually going to be. Now, coming into the pit lane, you need to keep an eye out for where the start of the pit lane speed limit actually begins. These will be indicated at every track by a board with the pit lane speed limit actually marked on it in both kilometers per hour and also miles per hour and also a set of red cones. When you reach this mark, you need to be at or below the pit lane speed limit, which is 60 kilometers per hour or 37 miles per hour. This is a universal pit lane speed limit that we have for all cars and all tracks within Project Cars 2. So all you've got to do is just remember that 60 kilometers per hour slash 37 miles per hour mark and make sure that you're at or below that speed limit when entering the pits. When you hit this point, AO control will now take over and you can sit back and relax and just watch the pit stop process happen. You don't need to worry about touching or adjusting anything until you actually exit the pit lane. At the end of the pit lane speed limit zone, there will be another set of boards very similar to the ones that you saw when you came in, but this time with a cross through the pit lane speed limit and will be accompanied by a set of green cones. You will then be able to take back over manual control and accelerate out of the pit lane disengaging the pit lane speed limiter. Obviously, where this is done under AI control, it will just hand back manual control to the player and then you can accelerate away out of the pit lane. When you've actually stopped in the pit box, you'll be able to see exactly what the pit crew are doing to the car with the HUD element displayed on the screen. This is broken down into fuel, tyres and also repairs. Then over on the left, you've also got the actual timer as to how long your pit stop is actually taking. Now each of the three areas for the pit stop process will actually be colour coded depending on what is planned in the pit strategy for your stop. If anything is ever white, it means that it is planned for this pit stop but work is yet to begin in that area. If anything is marked yellow, it means that work is currently in progress and there will also be a progress bar showing how much more work the pit crew have to do in that area of the pit stop. Once that work is complete, it will change to green to indicate that it is done. And if anything's ever marked grey, it means that nothing is planned in that area for this pit stop and no action will take place. Once all work is complete, everything will turn green, you'll get a pit stop complete message and then the AI will proceed to drive out of the pits, handing back over manual control once you've exited the pit lane speed limit zone. Now those wanting a more realistic and immersive experience will want to have the manual pit control option switched on which means that they will have complete control of the car when driving into the pit lane, going into the pit box, driving out of the pit box, and then proceeding out of the pit lane. 
The process for it all is pretty much the same as under AI control. Obviously you need to make sure you get the car slowed down before the pit lane speed limiter boards. Obviously if you've got a pit lane speed limiter option with a button assigned to that, you need to engage the pit lane speed limiter before you reach that zone and obviously then drive and proceed into the pit lane, head towards your pit box and obviously turn into that. You need to make sure that you actually brake and stop within the pit box because you may overshoot and then you'll lose time having to readjust the position of the car and parking it in the pit box correctly before the pit crew actually start working on the car. And then obviously once the actual pit stop process has been complete, if you're using a manual clutch you need to make sure that you're on that because once the car drops down off the jacks you will be in gear and you'll be able to drive out of the pit box and return to the fast lane of the pit lane, head towards the exit. Then once you get to the pit limiter off boards, you can disengage the pit limiter and accelerate out of the pit lane. So for the final part of this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the rules and regulations in and around pit stops. And one thing that we've been mentioning in a number of points throughout this episode is obviously the pit lane speed limit, which is 60 kilometers per hour and 37 miles per hour. This is on all tracks that have a pit lane, no matter what car you're in, is a fixed speed limit across the entire game on all tracks that contain an actual pit lane. One of the things you need to keep an eye out for is when exiting the pit lane, there may be a white line that extends out onto the circuit from the pit exit. You're meant to stay on the side of this white line that the pit exit is actually situated and not cross it, as doing so may lead to a penalty. The length of this pit exit line does vary from track to track. Some tracks could be really, really short, some that could be pretty much non-existent at all and they'll have a dotted line. However, any tracks where there's a solid white line extending out from pits, make sure you do not cross it before that line ends. In terms of the actual penalties for crossing the white line, in qualifying sessions you get up to two warnings, that means two times crossing that white line before you'll get a penalty. And the penalties will start to come in the form of one grid place penalties each time you cross that white line. In a race you'll get one warning for doing it for the first time, then after that you'll get a drive through penalty or a 20 second penalty if you have drive throughs turned off. And if you continue to cross that white line, you'll keep incurring more drive through or 20 second penalties. In the case of Long Beach, it's actually a blue line that extends out from the pit exit, which later turns to yellow. And you've got to follow this all the way down to this point here. That is the end of the line and you can then cross after that point. If you cross it before then, you'll get a penalty. It's not so obvious at Long Beach, which is one of the reasons why I'm pointing it out here to you, but hopefully that'll give you a better indication and stop you from getting any penalties in the future. When it comes to the actual pit stop process, there's some stuff that you want to keep in mind depending on the vehicle that you're in and the type of motorsport that it's actually associated to. Things like the actual refueling rates, or whether the fuel and tyres are done separately or at the same time will vary depending on the motorsport discipline that the car is associated to. With regards to refuelling rates, for the Indy cars they are refuel at a rate of 10.5 litres per second. For the Formula cars such as the Formula A, the Formula X, the Formula C and the Formula Rookie they will refill at a rate of 12.5 litres per second. For all other vehicles in the game, they should be refilling at a rate of 2.9 litres per second during a pit stop. In terms of the actual pit stop sequence, for the touring cars, GT cars, the prototype cars and the road cars, both fuel and tyres will be done separately. The fuel will be done first, then once the refuelling has been complete, the wheel technicians will move in and change the tyres and also any damage repair will happen at the same time as the tyre change and then obviously extend onto the period for the length of time that it's going to take to repair the damage. Then for all other cars, which includes the Indy car, the Formula cars that we mentioned earlier and any other generic open wheel cars and also any of the vintage and historic cars that date from pre-year 2000, they will have their refueling and tyre changes and also repairs done at the same time simultaneously. One last tip to round off the episode it's for those who use practice and qualifying sessions and when driving out of the garage your engineer will actually point in the direction that you need to proceed down the pit lane to exit the pits. If you're at a track that you've never been to before obviously you need to keep an eye out for this and make sure that you actually end up going out of the pit lane in the right direction as you don't want to be driving down the wrong way down the pit lane as you will get a penalty if you don't turn around quick enough. So that is going to conclude it for this third episode of the Insider's Guide to Project Cars 2 looking at pit stops. Hopefully you guys picked up various hints and tips throughout this video. If you do have any further comments or questions feel free to leave them down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Other than that, 
I hope to see you in next week's video, but in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Take care.